Okay, so uh, ears, as the name says, is all about hearing, all right? So everywhere I go, depending on the audience, I all choose different titles. So I'll go president, CEO, founder, and uh, our, my co-founder is a gentleman, uh, a friend of Mr. McEwen's from Montreal. And, uh, but I also sometimes use the title chief hearing evangelist. Uh, when I was at TED a few years ago, it w we had a big sign on us and allowed us to have people interact with us, you know, so what do you do, right? So the conversation was, how is the one thing that affects everyone in this room, right? At TED conferences, a hundred speakers of 12 to 18 minutes, the thing that nobody talks about, right? That's your hearing. So hearing is still the number one, is still uh, the most undervalued of the sensory perception, right? Ask anybody, would you rather lose your hearing or your eyesight? People will say, oh no, I can't imagine losing my eyesight because you think it affects you. In fact, when you lose your hearing, it affects your interaction with people, not some, so much objects. In the mining industry, hearing loss is the, one of the biggest, biggest problems. Okay? In fact, by the time you're 50 years old, 60% of miners have hearing loss. By the time they retire, the number is closer to 90. So if you run a mining company, it's a line item of how much you will pay in compensation or work-related accidents related to hearing. So our company mission is to end this. We believe we have the technology today. This has been a long road in the making. I've been uh, on this path for, for many, many years. And, uh, and finally, the world's caught up too. So if you, you listen now into wearables, and there's actually a category called hearables, and people are talking about this. You know, the whole stigma of wearing hearing aids is going, okay? I'm not saying it's gone, but it's going. Because when my parents started in this business in the 60s, my parents tar targeted between 75 and 87 years old. At 84, you had a 100% success rate because the people couldn't interact anymore. Now the industry targets 40-year-olds. Okay, so it takes them 10 years to figure out, and then they try to make the sales at 50, right? So the world has changed. In fact, 20% of teenagers today have some degree of hearing loss, right? 20%. So these are 20%, then they start clubbing, then they start, you know, doing the things, and then they start working. So by the time that you inherit them, okay, they're already 30 to 40% of them have some degree of hearing loss. Most people don't know what hearing loss is. So this is a healthy cochlea. Sound goes into your ear and it sends a liquid through your cochlea over here and it makes these little hair cells move. Each one of the hair cells is responsible for some of the information that you hear, right? On the right here, you have something damaged by, uh, a cochlea damaged by noise. In here has all the high frequencies, the S's, the T's, the P's. Somebody who has a no high frequency hearing loss, a noise induced hearing loss, can't comprehend Okay, so everything sounds muffled, can't comprehend the S's, the P's. So you walk into, and so for example, a man is, it comes into his house, he's looking for his daughter. She goes, sweetheart, where are you? She goes, daddy, on airs. Okay, it doesn't matter how loud she says that she's upstairs, he has noise-induced hearing loss, he doesn't understand the S's, the P's, the T's. Okay, so we've developed two technologies. One is a, is a passive product that takes exactly to the shape of the ear, and this is part of the the, the safety demo. So essentially, we put this funky looking headband, okay? This is not the product, this is just a fitting system. And, um, and we're gonna use Nathan as our guinea pig, okay? Um, and basically, what we're gonna do, right? Well, we had this discussion <laughs> on the phone, okay? Yeah, so, <laughs> you, didn't, you weren't really paying attention. <laughs> okay? So during the time that it'll take, I'll continue the presentation. He'll hit, sit here and smile, okay? If and if ever wanted to insult Nathan, <laughs> he's your chance. All right. <laughs> what did you say? What? <laughs> right. So the finished product that we're gonna we're doing, we're gonna do for Nathan is gonna look like this. It actually starts generic, and what what's happening here is a part A, part B silicone is mixing under pressure goes into inside of a membrane and the, the liquid silicone hardens and takes exactly to the shape of the ear, okay? So the silicone flows, it mixes under pressure, goes inside the device, almost 90% cured by the time it hits here, starts to expand in, in Nathan's ear, takes to the shape of his ear, hardens, and now he's gonna sit there for the next couple of minutes and uh, I won't say anything, by the time I finish my presentation, I'll remove it and he'll have a custom ear mold. 
Why that's important is in today's technology to do it, like for a hearing aid, it's a three to four week process with about a 25% error margin. So if you're going after 500,000 mines and uh, workers in South Africa, you can't deal with a 25% error margin, right? So the automatic fitting system allows you to address that. And why is comfort so important? A lot of times we do these presentations and people say, oh, it's fantastic, my guys are really good, they wear the product 80% of the time. And it, this is a little bit like somebody tells you they got, you know, 62% on their exam. It's like you don't know if you encourage them or like, look, 90 is the passing grade, okay? 60 doesn't cut it anymore, right? So in terms of performance, wearing your device 80% of the time actually cuts its performance by 50%, okay? So that's why you have this high incidence of hearing loss despite the fact that these products have been on the market for over uh, 40 years. So we've divine, uh, designed a technology that allows it custom. It allows you to communicate in noise, so there's no reason to remove it. It is a passive product. It can go into any kind of mining environment, very comfortable. And then you can add an element to it, which is a communication. So if you're plugged into radio, you actually can just plug into your radios, and it'll actually pipe the sound right into it. Okay, so this is what we'll call our, our first generation product. We sold it to a lot of mines around the world. Um, and uh, including gold mines. So, um, and the next product that, that we're working on is our next level of product. So the, bio, the product is, we're not sure yet if we're gonna call it code, it's a code name right now, Bionic Ears. It's a catchy name, but it's also like, is it too medical, is it, you know? So right now it's, it, it's a working title. And the idea is to connect the worker. Right, so you hear about wearables and the connected objects and IoT. So it is now possible to take away the responsibility, which now lies 100% onto the shoulders of the health and safety people. So the health and safety people will give you headphones, they'll give you earmuffs, they'll give you foam plugs, and then they're going to uh, hold their breath and pray that within a year or two years or three years, your hearing is not going to degrade. Okay, like the difference, a 20 dB hearing loss, which is 20, 25 dB, means no compensation, right? A 30 dB hearing loss could be, depending on your, between five and $80,000, depending on your, the worst place in the United States to lose your hearing, okay, is Detroit. Because Detroit, it takes uh, your full hearing loss, you get paid $1,000 once you demonstrate that you can no, no, no longer function with your hearing loss. So there is no problem in, in Detroit. Okay, there's no hearing loss there, okay, because nobody, nobody claims, right, because everybody wants to work. In, um, you know, in, in, in Utah, for example, it's $187,000. Great, great place to lose your hearing, okay, financially. So our device combines the ability to have hearing protection, communication. We know that in the mining and industry, a lot of the reasons that people remove their hearing protection in, in order to communicate. So what we've designed is we put the microphones inside the earpiece, and instead of using vocal effort to speak louder than the noise, okay, because you can't hear it, we just capture the information from within your ear, right? Then we treat that, we extract the noise, we extract the heart rate, so we know your stress levels, we know, you know uh, your oxygen levels, and we also know how fast your heart is beating. There's an accelerometer in the device if the person falls, it's also a complementary to man down. It's not our core focus because we know that a lot of it is there. What we do differently is that if the person falls down and doesn't get back up, we tr our system triggers and starts measuring his breathing. Okay, his breathing is acoustic and his heart rate. So <sighs> like that or no breathing, right? No breathing, no heart rate, no good, right? So you can change your parameters of your emergency response based on, on what. And then the whole time, instead of doing guesswork, we process the information up to the cloud, and then alerts will be in. So at the end of each shift, the, the, the system will alert, okay, boom, Mr. McEwen, he's set, okay? So you're, you're, you're good on that side? Yeah. Did it make me look cool? Yeah. <laughs> and don't worry, we'll tell you all about this later, man. <laughs> so a few minutes later, you're left with you know, an ear mold that takes to the shape of your ear, okay? So that's, that's a process today that takes weeks to do and that we can do on the spot. So that's the basis of the, uh, of the technology, which also gets attached to the bionic ear. So it's a wired version, wireless here. The computer has a full CPU. So we're assuming, even though we know that the trend is moving towards 
everybody has a cell phone, that'll take five to seven years. So in the interim, we're assuming that nobody's going to have a cell phone and this needs to communicate. It also has an FM transmitter, so it can connect to a wireless system, it can connect to, uh, to your uh, Bluetooth radios or your smartphone, and it also connects to person to person. So we've designed it with an FM transmitter, so if the workers need to go, we're trying to simulate what would happen if we were in a, in a less noisy environment, right? I wouldn't come up to you like this, I would come up to you like this, we would have a conversation. So in a given range or on a series of equipment, we can tailor the adjustments so that our devices connect to each other. So inside the little box here, so the worker wears the box like this, the boxes recognize each other, they'll pair. So let's say we're working on a specific machine and that code is blue. The blue will connect <coughs> to the blue and then we'll, we'll be able to talk to each other using the device automatically. Okay, so they never have to, to remove it or, or feel that they're, and everything gets piped to uh, the cloud. At the end of the day, I know it's a lot of information in a, in a short period of time, but what we do better than anybody else in the world and why we make a big claim like we're going to end noise-induced hearing loss is because we're able to do these things. So everybody we talked about, you know, 20% teenagers, 30% at the beginning, 50% at 50 years old, right? That means that almost every one of our customers has some degree of hearing loss. So if you have 50% hearing loss and you go into a, fa into a mine or a factory and you put on a decent set of earmuffs and that gives you 20, 30% more, you actually now have 70, 80% hearing loss. Your ability to understand speech or roof talk or any of the other noises in the industry is almost impossible, right? So we will actually build a hearing aid into the device. Then we're going to monitor continuously to make sure that the device is always in. So we do a loop. And if there's a problem, it'll beep, it'll advise you, and supervisor will come and see you. Nathan, you, you know, you've got to put these in properly, okay? And then we'll measure your dose. Same with the radiation, right? The radiation meters that say, so dose is a calculation. So it's very much like either radiation or the sun, right? So it's how long, for how, for how, long, how loud, and what dB level. For example, the rum of a, a trum, uh, drum has low, low frequencies, has tons of energy, super damaging. Okay, because it has a lot of energy. The high frequency ding, the hisses of the, the, of the um, air hose, it's annoying, but it has no energy, very, very little damage. So we're able to calculate that dose, the man down we talked about, and the biometrics. And our closing statement is, this is not something we can do alone, right? So we'll provide the technology. We need the companies that are committed to it, you know, that give us the access to the workers. And this is not something that costs thousands of dollars. We're bringing this to market on a subscription model, right? So we're, we're backed by a huge company called Arrow Electronics, who are betting really, really huge in IoT. So they're giving us a full 360 program where we can, instead of charging you $1,000 for this, we'll charge you 12 or 14.99 a month, which is just about the same price you're paying for the phone plugs that haven't worked for the last 40 years. So we're making it affordable and, um, and of course, effective. And that's the story. So where does Nathan go from here? Yeah. So got his buds. What? yeah. So then the ne the next step is just to take the the handles, and then just position inside of here. And then you've got your things. And inside is a cord. And then he just pops the cord into it, puts them around his neck, and goes into his ears. Th these models are for the phone. Uh, eventually, when the, when the Bionic Ear is on the market, it'll have a Bluetooth chip and it'll connect to your phone. So, you know, not that it'll be a big application in, in mining, but you'll, you would be able to actually listen to music off your device on your phone. So if he puts those in his ears right now, will he hear the noises in the room or...? He'll, he'll, hear, he'll hear less. So the, the way the technology is designed is to make it as flat as possible. Um, so as to not distort the, fr the frequencies. So it's really a little bit like just lowering the volume of the room or the background noise. As he was speaking, it was getting quieter and yeah. quieter, so, so I knew when it was, when it was working. Yeah. Uh, sorry, is the DB rating on that comparable to the phone plug or better? Uh, it's, it's better, yeah, it's better. But the, the, the reality is that we actually measure it. 
right? So we won't take the we will take the guesswork completely out of it. And it's uh, also there is some morphology of the ear, right? So uh, you know somebody who has a very short ear canal, somebody who has a very big ear canal could have a different dB level. So what we what, what the device does, it'll measure the outside sound and it'll tell you you're exposed to 98, 102, uh, 97. Your product is giving you 25. You're safe for eight hours with this de with this device, or you're not. You know you're at 110 dB uh, continuously, and your two options are to put a pair of earmuffs on top of it or you know uh, affect your shift so you could be four hours in that noise and four hours in a diff different environment yeah. oh, thank, you. Thank, you. Okay. thank you